Hi guys, welcome back to another video of me teaching. And today I have this question on the board for you guys. So, why don't we get into the question? So, this question says that for a positive integer n, prove that this equation, this, has no rational solution. And we're going to prove this using proof by contradiction. Okay? So, how do we contradict to this? Well, we can just assume there is a solution, x is equal to p over q, and just to note that p over q is fully simplified. Okay, so if x equals to p over q is a solution, then that means that if we just plug it into here, then this must satisfy that this is equal to zero, right? So if we plug it in, then we get n cubed minus n plus one times p squared over q squared, because we squared this, and then minus into the fifth minus n plus one, and then times x, which is this, and the last one has no x. Goes to zero. Okay, now we don't like denominators, right? So, can we just multiply the left and right by q squared? So, then we'll get n cubed minus n plus 1 times this one, q squared and q squared cancel out. So, we just have p squared minus this one, n to the fifth minus n plus 1. q squared and q cancel out one q, but then there's still a q on the numerator. So it will be p q and minus into the seventh minus n plus one times q squared. And this is still equal to zero because q squared times zero is zero. Hmm. Now what do we do? Well, I'm first going to explain to you how all of these coefficients are actually odd, okay? So let's first look at the first one n cubed minus n plus 1. Well, I'm going to first factor out an n from the first two, okay? So it'll be n times n squared minus 1 plus 1. And we can factor this. So we have n times n plus 1 times n minus 1 plus 1. And then we see that this is a triple positive integer consecutive product. That means that this actually has to be even. And we know that an even number plus 1 has to be odd. So we know that this is actually odd. Okay. Now, why don't we look at the second one? n to the fifth minus n plus 1. This is equal to, factor out the n from here, so we get n times n to the fourth minus 1 plus 1. Well, how do we factor this? was pretty easy. Just think of n to the power 4 as n to the power of 2 squared. So then we can factor it as n times n squared plus 1 times n squared minus 1. And of course, don't forget the plus 1. And now we can factorize this into n plus 1 and n minus 1. So we get n times n squared plus 1 times n plus 1, n minus 1, plus 1. And again, we have the triple consecutive. And we know that this is even, right? And we know even times any number has to be even. So then this whole thing is even. Even plus 1 is odd. So this is odd. Now, lucky last, we have this one. n to the power of 7 minus n plus 1 equals 2. Again, we factor out the n from this. We have n times n to the 6th minus 1 plus 1. And again, think of n to the power of 6 as n to the power of 3 squared. So we can factor it as n times n cubed plus 1 and n cubed minus 1. And then we plus 1 equals 2. Now, I'm going to factorize these two at the same time. So we get n times. This first one we'll factorize into. If we just... Look at the formula, then you see it will be equal to n plus 1 
times n squared minus n plus 1. And the second one will be, this will be factorized into n minus 1 times n squared plus n plus 1. And of course, don't forget this plus 1. Now, again, we have the triple consecutive. And that is even. And like I said, anything multiplied by an even is even. So even plus 1 is odd. So now we know that all of these coefficients are odd. And this is actually a huge help into us proving that this whole thing contradicts. So I'm just going to rub everything out. So now we're actually going to split this into cases. So I'm going to just going to write this. Case one, P and Q are both even. Wrong. Why? Because we assume that X is equal to P over Q, right? And P over Q is fully simplified. But if P and Q are both even, then couldn't we simplify it further by just dividing the top and bottom by a minimum of 2? Yes, so that is not possible. So why don't we just let the first case to be P and Q are both odd. So we see that if P is odd, then P squared is odd. And odd times odd is odd. And Q squared is odd. And we know that. Every single one of these coefficients is odd. So we know that every single three of these three terms is odd. So then we can see that this whole thing will be odd. So we know that the left-hand side is odd, but the right-hand side is 0, and 0 is an even number. So then odd cannot equal to even, so it contradicts. So we have a contradiction. No, case two. We have P is even, Q is odd. Does this mean? Okay. Hmm. So if P is even, then P squared is even, right? And we know this is odd. Odd times even is even. Okay. Now, we see here, P times Q is even times odd. Even times odd is even. Odd times even is even. Now, we go on to the last one. Q squared is odd. Odd times odd is odd. So, we see that the left-hand side altogether is odd. But the right-hand side is an even. So again, we have a contradiction. Case 3. P is odd and Q is even. Just swap it around. This means that, and we know that case 3 and case 2 are actually the same because P and Q are symmetric, okay? So then, that means that we get the same conclusions from case 2 as from case 3. So we still get the left-hand side being odd, and that means that we still get a contradiction. So now, since all three cases have contradicted to our original assumption, then that means that the whole thing has contradicted to our original assumption, which was that this thing does have rational solutions. So we have proved that this has no rational solutions. So thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoy my videos and you want more content like this, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it.